Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're just gonna do a couple more SN2 and E2 reactions, right? In the last two lectures, we spent one covering SN2, we spent one covering E2, and we did plenty of problems, but why not do just a few more before we dive into SN1 and E1 reactions, all right? So this is all this lecture is gonna be, just four or five more problems where we work out each question in detail, and then then we can finally get to E1 and SN1, all right? So we're just gonna go ahead, jump right in. All right, consider the following elimination reaction. What is the major product for the following reaction? Awesome, so we're gonna do this step by step, all right? First step, all right, identify our starting material. All right, what do we have for our starting material? Easy, we have a carbon attached to a halogen. This is an alkyl halide. Perfect, because we know how to deal with alkyl halides now. All right, second step, what is our reagent? All right, what is our reagent? Well, we have methoxide here. All right, and guess what? Methoxide is a strong base strong nucleophile and you can always double check that by looking at the tables for our categories all right make sure you you get familiar with those memorize those all right next we're gonna look at our alpha carbon all right we're developing this step by step here we're gonna look at our alpha carbon we're gonna see how substituted it is all right it's secondary all right we have a secondary alpha carbon now with all the following uh, uh, information we've gathered here, just looking at what we have to begin with, all right, we have a secondary alpha carbon and we have a strong base, strong nucleophile. If we go back to our old notes where we have our table of, of categories and what kind of reactions we get for the following base nucleophile, what you actually notice, and you know what, I'll just scroll up just to show you, is we're going to have a bit of SN2 and E2. And look at that. We have a strong base, a strong nucleophile. Remember, it's methoxide. Well, let's look at our category of what that can give us for strong base, strong nucleophile that is secondary. We're going to get a good blend of E2 and SN2 products, but our major product is E2. All right, now since our reaction since our question let's go back to our question is saying what is the major product we know we're going to have sn2 and e2 but because our alpha carbon is secondary not primary e2 products are going to be our major that means for this problem we're not going to draw sn2 since we obviously know it's not our major product and we're really just trying to hone in on the major product all right so now we're going to we're going to just focus on e2 all right, and we want to identify unique beta positions. All right, let's identify our unique beta positions. So let's zoom in. Here's our alpha position. Let's write that a little bit better. Here's our alpha position. Here's a beta position over here. And then there's another beta position over here. Fantastic. All right, let's label this one A. Let's label this one B. All right, so we have two unique beta positions. All right, and we're going to look at each one individually. We're going to look at A. All right, how many hydrogens does this beta position have? Three. It's just a methyl group. So we literally do not have to worry about stereospecificity or stereoselectivity. We just do a normal elimination whenever we have three hydrogens. All right, so if we do a normal elimination reaction, we're just going to form a double bond here between that alpha and beta position. And that, uh, that halogen goes away, it leaves. And so our final product for that beta position for that E2 reaction looks like this. So this is our first E2 product. All right, we worked with the first beta position. Now let's look at our other beta position. How many hydrogens do we have here? Well, we have one hydrogen here. All right, so we have one hydrogen. Let's write that out, one hydrogen. All right, you know what that means? We have to think stereospecificity. All right, stereospecificity. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw each carbon 
alpha and beta. We're going to label them alpha, beta. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw everything that's attached to the alpha carbon and everything that's attached to the beta carbon. So on our alpha carbon, we obviously has our, we have our halogen on the wedge. All right, we have our hydrogen on a dash. And then on the straight planar line, we have our methyl group. On the opposite side, we have our phenyl group on our straight line. We have this ethyl group on our dash. And then on our wedge, we have a hydrogen. Now, the point is to get the halogen and the hydrogen on opposite planar sides. Now, right now, they're opposite sides, but they're not planar. But you know what? Here's a trick. You don't really have to even rotate this since they're already opposite. All right, the trick here is just to draw your double bond. Actually, let me use a better black color here. You just go ahead and pretend your base came, abstracted the hydrogen, formed a double bond here between the alpha and beta position and your chlorine left, even though we didn't get them on the anti-paraplanar. But what we can do is now when we draw our double bond, make sure we draw our, our, our straight lines our phenyl and methyl, since they're both on straight lines, on the same side of the double bond. All right, so if we draw our phenyl up, we have to draw our methyl up as well because they're both on straight lines. They have to be on the same side. And then the groups that are on dashes to make sure they're on the same side of the double bond. So we'll draw our ethyl group like this and our hydrogen as such. All right, now what we notice is this is our second product beautiful now again let's go back to what our question has asked of us all right what has our question asked of us well our major product not minor not all so that means we need to figure out what our major product is. And to do that, we need to do a few more steps. We need to identify how substituted each product is. So one here, look at our double bond. It only has one group. So this product is mono substituted. If we look at this product right here, here's our double bond. All right, here's our double bond. It has one, two, three groups on it. It's try substituted all right this is our more this is our more substituted product all right so this is our zaitsev product and this is our least substituted product this is our hoffman product now which one our zaitsev or our hoffman product or our major well we need to go back to our base is our base bulky or not Methoxide is a pretty small base, so it's not bulky at all, which means our most substituted product is our major product. That means our Zaitsev product is our major product. Nice. Now let's look at the answer choices. Which one of these displays our major product? We are looking at a double bond with a methyl and a phenyl group on the same side of the double bond and the ethyl group on the other side. I'm going to make this easy for you. That's C. Look at that. Our double bond where we have our methyl and, and phenyl group on the same side, and then we have our ethyl on the other side. All right, so the, answer, the correct answer choice for this problem is C. Fantastic. Let's move on to this next problem. Consider the following reaction. Draw two, two chair conformations of the substrate A utilizing ring flip. All right, so we're going to draw this in a chair conformation, and then we're going to draw the ring flip of it, and then we're going to circle the reactive con uh, conformation. All right, so let's draw. Let's draw our two chairs. Oh, man, I'm never very good at this. All right, here's one chair. All right, we're going to go ahead. We're going to number this one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to stay consistent here. We're going to number this one, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. All right, now we want to go ahead and uh, put all the substituents in the proper place. We have an ethyl, all right, at position one. Now remember, dash is down, wedge is up. All right, so now we have an ethyl on the dash. 
So that's going to be down. So it's going to be in an equatorial down position here. All right, then we have a bromine at position two. It's also on a dash, so it's going to be down. Here's a bromine. All right, and then at three, we have a methyl, so it's on a wedge, so that's going to be up. All right, fantastic. Okay, now we want to draw the ring flip of this. All right, so let's try to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the same ring structure. All right, I'm going to draw the same ring structure like so. All right, and what instead of numbering it one here, because of our ring flip, what we can do is just move the one down. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, five, six. You could technically draw your ring flip like, like this as well. Oh, man, I'm so bad at this. Down. All right, and then up like this, you know, where you flip it, but you can tell I'm very bad at that. So I keep the same ring structure. My numbering moves to insinuate the ring flip. Now, at one, we have our ethyl group on a wedge, so it's down, right? So ethyl's down. Bromine is on a dash as well, so it's also down. Let's draw this right. Two here, down. Bromine. Awesome. And then three is going to be our methyl, which is on a wedge. So up. Up. That's down. Oops. Methyl. All right. Fantastic. All right. Cool. Now, the cool thing here, all right, is we've drawn our ring confirmation for this molecule all right we did our first structure then we did a ring flip now we can make a few notes about this here okay for example this ring conformation has more of the bulkier groups on equatorial positions that means it's more thermodynamically stable stable fantastic that's good to know this is more thermodynamically stable but this conformation, this conformation has our bromine here in a down, in an axial position, all right? And there's a hydrogen right next to it here that's also in a axial position, all right? And they're, and they're anti-paraplanar from each other. That means that this ring conformation is actually more kinetically ready to react with something all right so this is our more thermodynamically stable this is our more kinetically reactive conformation of this molecule this ring structure is more kinetically active all right because now we can bring in our methoxide all right and it's going to it's going to deprotonate here it's going to steal the hydrogen hydrogen's going to form a double bond right here and the bromine is going to leave. And guess what? This leads us into the second part of this question. Draw the major product B. All right? Draw the major product B. Well, the major product is going to be this connectively reactive chair conformation where our base can come in, steal the hydrogen, form a double bond here, and our halogen leaves. And then our molecule is going to look something like this. All right, where we form a double bond here, we have our ethyl group here and our methyl group right here. All right, and that translates to a product that looks like this. All right, and this is our major product. All right, let's do another problem. What is the major product of the following reaction? Well, we have our alkyl halide here. Beautiful, here's our alpha carbon attached to the bromine. This is actually a strong nucleophile weak base. And guess what? Our alpha carbon here is secondary. Now, we have an alkyl halide where the alpha carbon is secondary. All right, we have our nucleophile, that's a strong nucleophile weak base. This is just going to be an SN2 reaction. An SN2 reaction where this bromine is replaced by the iodide. All right. But hold your horses. This is also a chiral center. We have a chiral center. So it's going to proceed through 
inversion of configuration so if we have r we end up with s and if we have s we end up with r in regards to sn2 reaction all right so this wedge is going to be converted to a dash in our final product it's going to replace the bromine here and our final product is going to look like d all right fantastic really easy there now we want to do a few of these problems as well. Identify the major and minor product for each of the following reactions. I'm going to do a few with you, and I'm going to leave the rest for you to try and figure out. Let's do A. All right, here's A. We have a bromine right here. Here's our alpha carbon. It's secondary. And look, we have Cl minus. This is strong nucleophile weak base all right this is obviously going to result in an sn2 reaction where we replace the bromine with cl minus but there's a there's a chiral center right here so that means this wedge is going to get converted into a dash and so our product is going to look like this cl all right and the bromine leaves right it got dumped remember our sn2 love story here all right, let's do B. All right, let's look at B. Here's our starting material. Here's our alkyl halide. All right, we're reacting it with NaOH. Okay, fantastic. Now, this is our alpha carbon. It's tertiary. Okay, it's tertiary and um, it's tertiary and our reagent is a strong base, strong nucleophile all right now whenever we have a strong base strong nucleophile okay we can have either sn2 or e2 reagent uh, uh react uh, products but this is tertiary we only get a mix of sn2 and e2 if the alpha carbon is primary and secondary when we get to tertiary strong base strong nucleophile only gives E2 products, all right? So we only want to draw the E2 products here, all right? So now what we want to do, all right, now what we want to do is draw our E2 products. So here's our alpha carbon, all right? We're going to draw all our unique beta positions. Here's a beta position. This is also a beta position, but it's not unique. These are equivalent. So we really only want to focus on one. So we'll focus on this beta position. We'll focus on this beta position here. Now, we'll call this A. Beta position A only has three hydrogens, so we're just going to do a normal elimination reaction. And that means this is going to give us this product right here. This is our first product. If we take a hydrogen here, we form a double bond between the alpha and beta position. Halogen goes bye-bye, it leaves. This is our product. Now, if we look at beta position B, we have two hydrogens. That means we have to form, all right, we have to form the trans configuration here, all right? Well, actually, what you notice is we can't form a cis and trans. It's only really one product, right? Because we don't have anything to identify this to be cis or trans. If we draw a line, through the double bond, we have these two equivalent groups on both sides. That is not going to help us distinguish cis from trans. All right, so our only product is this for that beta position. So now we have two products. All right, beautiful. Let's write how substituted they are. This is di and this is tri. Which one is our major substituent? Well, our base is not bulky. This is not a bulky base. So that means our more substituted product is our major product. That means this is our major product. All right. So that with that being said, I want you to do C and D on your own. All right. Some more motivation to do some practice problems. I'm giving them to you. Let me know what you get in the comment section below. If you have questions or you want me to double check your answers again, uh, my line of communication is open. You can leave it in the comments. You can email me, reach out to me. I want to help, all right? But I also want you to make an effort to try and do these problems on your own. So go ahead, make an attempt. Let me know if you have questions. Other than that, happy studying, good luck, and have a great day.